on now is Rifle Hughes. How are you, Rifle? Doing Good well. to see How you. you. Rifle is the... Uh, Oop, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. The director with McLean Design. McLean Design is actually the sponsor of the live stream lounge here at Bevanet Live Winter 2015. And uh, thanks so much for doing that. Oh, gladly. Yeah. So I want to talk to you uh, specifically about you know design trends that we're seeing in beverages right now. Um, what's working and what isn't working. Um, you know, what have you seen that is is really uh, sort of cutting the edge on the market in terms of label design and package design? You know, I, th I think it's tough. Um, you know, trends tend to sort of come and go, obviously. And over the last couple of years particularly with like um, Suja is probably a great example of, is you're seeing less and less coverage. Uh, you know, think back 10 years ago where you had um, Bolt House Farms and Naked and, and all these other premium juices that had great photography or illustrations. And nowadays, you know, that's just not real enough for, for consumers. Consumers actually want to see what's in there. Um, so you're seeing a lot of beverages that are stripping the cruff back, removing all the coverage and having much clearer labels. Right. And, uh, you know, so now you got this sort of Crayola box of, of flavors up on the shelf. It's just good-looking, appetizing juice. And, uh, you know, we've had clients in the past that have been concerned about that. It's like, well, what if they see our, our settling and our ingredients? And right. today's consumer, that's actually a good thing. They see it's real. Yeah. You know, juice that just sits there and stays in one form. Probably not the real thing. It's yeah. coming from some factory in Cincinnati or That's something That's a really interesting somewhere. point. I never really thought about that. I always thought that it was something that might detract consumers from buying a product, but you're, I think you have a good point there that it, it makes it look that much realer. It can. The, the flip side of it is um, there's a lot of people doing it. And right. so the ability to actually differentiate and have something that's meaningful and, and will help your brand stands out, I don't know that it's not time to start looking forward a similar way to communicate, but a way to better uh, communicate your brand and your point of difference. It's all you've got is the Crayola box of juices. There's right. there's a bunch of those now. You know, so. what I, it's interesting because also along, you mentioned Suja. Uh, Blueprint was one of the first brands to sort of list the ingredients on the front of the uh, right. bottle. And you see a whole bunch of cold press juice companies, mm -hmm. almost all of them, in fact. And uh, you're starting to see that in some other brands as well. Uh, what do you think of that approach? Uh, you, uh, it's hard to be a follower. Yep. Um, it worked for them. It was part of their design. It, it helped inform me very quickly what was there. But at the same time, there were also interesting ingredients. This was, again, coming from when, say, Naked or Odwalla were kind of the kings of the heap in there. Blueprint shows up, and Suja was pretty similar, too, with this, this deck of ingredients right on the front as design elements that clearly communicated to consumers things have changed and there's something new. When you're putting like cinnamon and other other interesting ingredients that sort of get me thinking about new flavors, that can be compelling. If you're the 80th guy to do it, I don't know that, that that's ultimately going to translate out to be a, a great strategy. Yeah. One of the uh, most explosive categories in terms of uh, growth this past year has been cold brew coffee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what have been some of the most effective ways to uh, describe cold brew coffee and make your brand stand out on the shelf among the huge number of entrants into the category. Right. Well, I know one of the things you wanted to discuss and that's kind of come up throughout the show is, is hierarchy. Right. Um, and that's a challenge with, with, with any brand, any beverage. There's so much that you feel as an entrepreneur that you can communicate that's special yep. about what your formulation uh, and your brand and, and what most entrepreneurs do that's actually can be a mistake is try to put everything there on the front right. label. you got to consider the environment of the retail space. Um, there's all sorts of different retail environments, whether from a bodega to a C-store or even a, you know, something like a Safeway that now has really cool uh, beverage areas in the store. But consumers uh, here in America have less and less time, and they're making decisions in fractions of a second. So if I'm walking up to the standard beverage shelf and looking at hundreds of SKUs, there's fractions of a second to consider you, the small new entrant that maybe has one facing, yep. and you're putting 83 bullet points, you're trying to tell me that you're all this stuff, and you get lost. One of the best things that you can do is establish a compelling graphic, a compelling brand that cuts through the clutter. Yep. Look at your environment, see what everybody else is doing, and maybe the best strategy is actually to go the other way right. 
just so that you can be seen in the crowd. Now, you don't want to break that link. You don't want to go so far the other direction that you're no longer a member of the category, mm -hmm. but you've got to do something to stand out. So when I think about, get back to your original question, you know, when I look at cold press coffee, everybody's doing a lot of the same, or not cold press, but the cold, uh, brew. cold brew. Yep. Um, the cold press is coming. Just just wait. Oh, yeah? <laughs> um, no, the cold brew coffee is, it, there's a lot of that. There's a yeah. lot of the same stuff. You see a lot of it in big Boston rounds. You see a lot of it in gable top cartons. Um, that's an interesting one. I don't know that structure is actually one of the things that consumers can easily recognize what category you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what a beer bottle looks like. Right. I expect beer to come in that. I know yep. what a water bottle looks like, so on and so forth. And when you've got an emerging category that hasn't quite established what its structure is, it's a little bit confusing. I think that will likely sort itself out. Um, but there's there's room for people to have, have different structures, too, that, that fit in but stand out. Yeah, um, very interesting stuff. Um, you mentioned label hierarchy, which is really, you know, one of the things, again, I, I did want to talk to you about. Um, you know, the emergence of non-GMO, mm -hmm. the emergence of organic, the emergence of now even biodynamic with some new brands right. has really uh, come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, the non-GMO uh, project verified seal is a, is a variety of sizes on a variety of packages. It's a uh, whopper. Yeah, what's that? It's a whopper. It's huge. It is. It is. You know, and, and what do you think about that? I mean, is a, does that kind of stuff belong in the front of a package, on the back of a package? I mean, and I know that's hard to say. Cause there's so many different categories and so many different products, but at the, at the the reality is like that's that's a big that's a big label. You know, it 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 at McLean Design. One of the things that we firmly believe is that your brand is the most important thing. Right. Um, if all you've got is that you're gluten-free and you're trying to put the gluten-free symbol forward, anybody else can come along and be gluten-free too. Right. So once everybody else gets there, when Coca-Cola is gluten-free, you lost. Right. So you have to build into what makes you unique and special. You know, we like, you know, we're proud of the fact that we were behind the design of the Monster Energy logo and can. And there's, there's a lot to be learned from that case study. And it's a very similar environment. When you look at the energy drink space back from the early 2000s, it was camouflage. Everybody was trying to argue, I've got 5% more energy or this ingredient or that. And one of the things that made Monster work was there wasn't any of that on there. There's no bullet points. It's just a brand and an attitude. Yeah. And it fit into the category. So non-GMO is absolutely important and people are looking for those products. But the people that are looking for those products are probably label readers. They're going to find you. Right. Um, they'll figure it out. And there's also context. And that's, that's an important thing for people to consider when they're developing their label. You're not alone. You're going to be on a shelf with a bunch of others. So the company that you keep helps define you as well. Yep. And if you're in a category that is non-GMO and it's, maybe it's hidden around the side or on the back, it's probably okay as long as your brand is what's carrying forward. You want to be unique and special and not a, not a commodity. That's some outstanding, excellent advice. And uh, I, you know, I, uh, for entrepreneurs that are watching right now, they really can benefit from what you're saying. And uh, you know, it's a tough, tough business, beverages. But having the right label, having the right pack, it's, it's, it's been proven over and over again yeah. that it can help your brand enormously. Well, it, it's, it's critical because if you're, if you're not on, seen on shelf, it doesn't matter how great your product is or what your company stands for, you, you really don't exist. Um, so having a great package that can penetrate through on the shelf and cut through all the competition, it's the first step. Now you have to back it up with a good product, certainly. Right. Uh, that's, that's equally important. That's what's going to get people coming back, what's, what's going to get you noticed and all those repeat purchase. But, you know, it's, it's just like, we often say this, it's like walking into a bar um, and you see the girl across the way. Yep. You just know the ones you like right. and you spot them through the crowd. But if I can't even see them, you know, I'm, I never get a chance to talk to her and figure out that she's actually an MBA from Harvard. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's what you've got to do. You've got to have a compelling appearance and personality up front so that I see you and I'm attracted to you and I want to... I want to get up the guts to step up and feed you a line. Yeah, Bent. Nicely said. Rifle, you're the man. Thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. And thanks to McLean Design once again, the sponsor sure. of the live stream lounge here at BevNet Live Winter Glad 2015. To do it. Thanks so much.